to go after it. I mean, the thing about being an entrepreneur is there's, it's just all to you. You know, a lot of people like to make excuses. I don't have connections. I don't have money. I don't have this. But, you know, if, if you find something that you like to do or love to do, be great at it and see if you can turn it into a business. And worst case, you're going to have fun doing what it is you love to do. And best case, you can turn it into a business. I, I'm just not big on excuses. I just think if you're really, you really, everybody has that opportunity to go for it. They just got to do it. There's no one set of traits that makes a great entrepreneur because I think everybody has it in them to be great at something. You know, a lot of people talk about passion and determination when to me it's more about effort. You know, what are you good at? What are you not good at? And then putting in the effort to figure out how to make it all work together to create a company. And so once you have that figured out, then you just have to go for it. And if you're willing to put in the time, you know, you can, you can make it work. I think too many people think they have to find the one idea and there's nothing wrong with failing. You know, you, I've told a lot of people, it doesn't matter how many times you fail, if, if you get it right, you're an overnight success. All you gotta do is get it right one time and you're that overnight success. Um, you know, I sold powder milk and that was a disaster. I had a, my senior year project in Indiana was opening up a bar that got closed because of a wet t-shirt contest with a 16 year old. That was a disaster, but that was good because it kept me out of the bar business. Um, I got fired from my first job in the software business because I wanted to close a deal instead of going out and closing a sale. I mean, instead of coming in and sweeping the floor, you know, and, and so it, it didn't matter how many times I failed. I just kept on going and going and going and entrepreneurs need to realize that Sometimes it's not the idea, you know, it's not being, it's not who you know, it's not how much money you have access to. It, it's really finding something that you, you really love to do. I had no idea I loved computers and technology, none. I mean, I took one class in Indiana in computers and I cheated to get through it. It was Fortran. And, and then I bought a, a little PC, a 994A from Texas Instruments for $99. Started teaching myself to program and found, you know, four hours later, five hours later, I, was, I would look up and I'd been working this entire time and I loved it. And so that was the difference. When I finally, I failed a lot of times and I really, I, I didn't know where I'd find my success. And then all of a sudden I started playing with PCs and technology and it just clicked. You know, personally, I think every time is a perfect time to start a business. There's no bad times. If, if you do the work, if you do the preparation, you'll know when it's time. And it doesn't mean that it won't be a little bit scary, but, you know, it, it's, you'll know. And you don't have to quit the daytime job if you, if you don't feel all that comfortable and you can give it a run at night. Um, but whatever works for you now with the Internet, um, you've got all the choices in the world. And you can just go out there and do your own thing. And and you know set up a business part-time one of the things that companies do or startups do they come up with an idea they'll google it and if they don't see it in the first two pages they think it's original you got to go back right because over the past 15 years there's so many different businesses that have tried and failed you have to go back and find those and learn from those. So you've got to understand all the implications and you have to learn from history. And so the best advice I can give you on a video before talking to you or emailing with you is that you've got to find out the history of people who have tried your idea because there's a 99.99999% chance that your idea has been tried before. That's not a good reason not to start it because you might be able to outperform them, but you better learn from the history of your idea um, because you know what they say about people who don't learn from history. You know, small businesses don't fail for lack of capital. They fail for lack of brains. They fail for lack of effort. Most people just aren't willing to put in the time to work smart. I mean, they, they, they go for it in a lot of cases, but they just don't recognize how much work's involved. And, and, and if you do the preparation, if you know, if you start a business, you better know your, your industry and your company better than anyone in the whole wide world because you're competing. And to think that whoever it is you're competing with is just going to let you come in and take their business, obviously that's naive. And I think most people don't recognize that. The one thing you should try to avoid at all costs is raising money powerful medicine right equity sweat equity is always the best equity if you can live like a student if you can just make your investment your time 
and your effort and your brain cells, right? You have a far better chance of succeeding because nobody gives you money. It doesn't matter if it's me, a bank, or anybody out of charity. You know, they everybody want wants something at some point. It may be five years, it may be 10 years. I'll give you a perfect example of that. Box.net, right, or box.com now, right? Aaron Levy sends me an email, 2005, so more than 10 years ago. <laughs> I gave him 250 grand because I was a, a customer. You're talking about scratching your own ass. And they were charging me. It was like 80 bucks a month to get storage, and they gave me more storage than everybody, 2005. This is great. So when he sent asking me for money, I'm like, I love it because you have revenue. Well, within two years, um, less than that, probably a year, they had, they're in Silicon Valley, and they're talking to um, venture capitalists who want them to just attack the market. And they brought in somebody who wants them to just give it away and eat the loss. And I'm like, you're going to end up spending tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars to do tens of millions in revenue. I don't like that's that. That's backwards. Yeah, that's backwards, and I'm going to get diluted to nothing. So I said, just give me my money back. Take, you know, I didn't even ask for schmuck insurance. I'm like, Aaron, you're going to go a different way. More power to you. I got my 250 grand back. He went on. You know, now they have a billion and a half market cap. I think I've made, you know, I probably would have made $2 million because I would have been diluted to nothing. Um, I've made more of that money then, but just the stress, the, you know, just the taking money and just continuing to take money changed who they are. So by the end of it, Aaron owns 4% of it, you know, that's still decent money, whatever it is, right? But yes. 4% of a billion and a half is $60 million. But he had a far better idea that if he just didn't chase it and chase you know, investment, he could have been worth a lot more, a whole lot more.